hello BTC Church. Um, so glad to be here. So glad that I can be with you. Kait na malayo tayo sa sa. I'm still in New York. We just got home from from Virginia, and I want to congratulate all those who are who decided to be baptized. Maybe this week, and maybe next week. So congratulations for taking that leap of faith. That um, big shift in your life because we've been talking about shift, you know, and the shift is like it's a life-changing event. It's something, something divine, a divine transition from one season to another. And I believe that most of us, that's what we are going through right now. You know, maybe you don't know it yet, but that's what you are going through, a transition, a shift. It's God's, it's God positioning you, leading you to receive the promises that He has for you. And the thing is that we're not just going through this one big shift in our lives. It is a series of events. Our lives is filled with shifts. Right? Hindi lang po isang shift that we will go through. Now, once you're done with it and then you say, thank God I'm done. You know, it's one shift after another. It's one event after another. It's life-changing that will bring you to God's plans for your life eventually. Amen. And I want you to know that God has big plans for your life. You are here. You were born not just to live and die, but you were born to live, to leave an imprint to this generation and to the next generation. You are not just to live a happy and comfortable life, but you are to become a blessing and to live an impactful life. Why? Because you are chosen. God has chosen you for a, for a, for a plan. And the key word here is leading. Could you please type in the comment section when I say more leading? L E L E A D I N G. Jesus is calling us and he will lead us to where he wants us to go and who he wants us to be. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not just all right, go and go and make disciples and then that's it. You know, God is saying that go and make disciples and I will show you. When he called the disciples in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 and 20, Sabbath, and as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And then Sabbath, Jesus said, Come, follow me. And he, he did not stop there. He says further on, he says, And I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. You know, every one of us, we are called to become followers of Jesus Christ. Maybe right now you're watching this somewhere, you know, maybe in a BTC home or maybe in your own home. I believe that this is the message for you. Maybe some, someone out there right now watching this is just deciding. Maybe kanina nakapag-decide ka to follow Jesus Christ. Or maybe someone out there has stopped following Jesus Christ. Maybe you made that decision a few months ago, maybe a few years ago. But then again, you stop following Jesus Christ for some, for some reason. You know what? Jesus is calling you once again. Maybe someone out there is, uh, has been following Jesus Christ, right? But you're struggling with it. And I believe that, again, every, every one of us, we are going through something. And every one of us, this is the message for each and every one of us. This is the message for you. And I love yung response ni Peter doon sa when, when Jesus asked them, come and follow me. Sabi doon sa may verse na yun na binasa natin, sabi, at once they left their nets and followed him. Could you please type it, type it in the comment section sabi mo, at once. What does that mean? It means immediately. Yung biglaan na lang. You know, some of us will say, mas gusto natin yung just once <laughs> instead of at once, Right? You know, ito po, yung, ito po yung naging response ni Peter. And I believe that Peter's response should be our, our response as well to Jesus' calling. You know, yung at once they left their nets and followed him. Ideally, that's what we want to do. Ideally, we want to follow Jesus Christ. I, believe, I, I remember this song dung, nung, uh, medyo bata -bata pa ako. I don't know if you, if you are familiar with this. With this band, yung Vertical Horizon, meron silang kanta yung sabi ron, He's everything 
you want he's everything you need he's everything inside of you that you wish you could be and kahit hindi na sinasabi who that who that person is to sa kanta na yun. because uh, this this band is a Christian band they were saying that it's Jesus that we want to be it's Jesus that we want to follow every one of us we want to follow Jesus we want to be like Jesus right that's who we want to be but in reality, that is so hard to do. Ang hirap gawin eh, right? Maybe that is where you are right now. You want to follow Jesus. You want to go through the shift. You want to, to go through the transition ng buhay mo. But somehow and some way, you are stuck. You've been meaning to follow Jesus Christ. You've been meaning to leave everything behind at once. You know, you've been meaning to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But here you are, you are stuck in your situation, whatever situation that you're in right now. You know, maybe because of this pandemic that um, you've lost the momentum. You've lost yung stride mo. Maybe you feel like a, a train, alam mo yun, speeding down, and then here comes yung pandemic. You're hitting that pandemic, that wall, and it's stopping you, or it stopped you dead on your tracks, dead in your tracks. And all of a sudden, na wala yung momentum mo. All of a sudden, na wala yung movement mo. And now you feel that you are stuck. You know, let me tell you this. God did not bring you out here, just like yung mga Israelites. God did not bring you out here into this pandemic for you to die a slow and painful, painful death. God wants to keep you, uh, God wants you to keep on going through this shift. Tuloy-tuloy. You know, we've been, we've been, um, sharing this message over and over and over again don't stop don't quit keep on going persevere never stop god wants you to keep on moving and you know god wants you to bring you through this crisis he wants you to go through this crisis bigger and stronger god wants to unstuck you sabi nga ni bishop we've been with him for a few days right now and this is what he's been uh talking to us has been telling us and this is the message i believe that each and every one every one of us needs right now god wants to give you what you've thought you've lost and what is that that is your momentum could you please declare it wherever you are in your household or in btc home and could you please type in the comment section right now say i'm getting my momentum back Maybe you've lost it. Maybe maybe you've hit that wall. Maybe you've hit COVID-19 and you're stuck. You, you're, you're stopping dead in your tracks like a train. But let me tell you right now, you are getting your momentum back. Again, type it in the comment section. Church at home, could you please say it out loud, scream it out loud, Sabimo, I'm getting my momentum back. Amen. And before, before we actually you know get our momentum back let's first look back at the events that lead up to that moment where we all want to be the moment of at once let me on leaving everything behind at once let's let's go doing some book of Luke. we were looking at um, the book of matthew before but let's look at uh, the same situation the same story this time through the eyes of Luke. si Luke kasi is a doctor and and he's into details. Kaya yung sulat niya po yung kanyang Gospel of Luke. It's full of details. Let's look at what really happened because nakita lang natin doon sa situation in the book of Matthew that Jesus called them, you know, to become fishers of men. Go and sabi niya doon, I will make you fishers of men. Come follow me. And then sabi doon, all at once, they left everything. And then that's it, you know. But really to see what really happened, what really transpired, what, what is the events that led up to that massive transition. Sabi sa may Luke chapter 5, verse 11. Sabi rin, so they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. So how did Peter, and of course, Andrew, and dun din yata si James and si John on the other boat, but th this, is, this is Peter's story, okay? How did Peter come to this big decision to leave everything behind and follow Jesus Christ? That's what we will be talking about today. That's what we will be looking at today. And we will be putting our feet on Peter's shoes. Because we all want to make that decision to leave everything behind and follow Jesus Christ. But how? Ano ba? Paano nangyari yun? And I don't know, it's a big decision for, for most of us. It's, it's a hard decision to make. 
we've been we've been tackling that that our problems you know following jesus christ but but jesus made all my problem but jesus made my ganto but jesus but jesus but jesus we have so many but jesus but we can see from peter's uh, story here that said at once he left everything behind so we need to see you know for us to make that same decision we need to see what led <laughs> to that decision amen so before we we go any further can we all stand up wherever you are right now and let's pray Let's pray. Lord, maraming pong salamat for this afternoon. Thank you, God, for gathering us kahit na sa internet, kahit na online. And I pray, God, that you will open up our eyes and our minds and our spirit, Lord, and you would speak to us and talk to us, Lord. Lord, I pray that let your word be loud in our minds and our spirit right now. And I believe and I pray, God, that it will change our lives forever. And I pray, Lord, that we will begin to see and we will lay down everything that we have and follow you, Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. So I'm getting my momentum back. That's the word. That's the declaration. Again, how? You know, let me tell you this first. It wasn't just a spur of the moment thing. Na yung parang, all right, I leave everything behind. Because sometimes we are just looking for that moment, right? Na I'm just I'm just waiting for that amazing moment where I will tell Jesus I'm going to follow you no matter what I'm going to leave everything behind all, all my sheep all my all my fish all my money even my parents your aking goals your aking dreams I will leave everything behind to follow you I'm just waiting for that moment though alam mo yon sometimes may mga ganun tayong mga moment eh alam niyo ba kung bakit hindi ko lang po experience alam niyo ba kung bakit hindi matuloy-tuloy yung outing ng barkada tama ba every summer we have that Every um, summer break, we have that. Now, we are planning to go to the beach, to an island, to go camping. Kasi hindi matuloy-tuloy. Alam mo yung mga tropa goals natin, right? Na we would be spending time sa beach, camping, sa tent, or maybe someday that we will have um, sports cars together, big houses, and then we will go on trips. Alam mo yun, tropa goals natin. Who believes that yung mga tropa goals, most likely, it won't happen. Right? Why? Because because you are waiting on each other. Because naghihintayan tayo. Naghihintayan tayo for that one person to get in a van and then drive to your house and pick you up. And then pick everybody else, uh, pick everybody up in their houses and then go do on sa ating destination. Tama ba? Most likely, that won't happen. Kasi naghihintayan tayo eh. Right? Because planning a big event It takes a series of events that bids up a momentum for that one grand thing to happen. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And that's why that's why building up a momentum is so important. That's why eh, momentum is really, really important. According to the dictionary, momentum, it's it means strength or force gained by motion or by a series of events. Right? So maybe... Life stops moving forward for you because of the pandemic, because of COVID, or maybe because of the fallout of it, right? Or maybe your business stops moving forward, or maybe your school, your dreams stops moving forward, right? But most importantly, your spiritual life stops moving forward. Maybe that's what's happening in your life right now. And you think that you've hit a wall and it stopped you dead in your tracks, like a train. You know, like a locomotive. Na bilang bang tumama sa wall or sa mountain or whatever, na bilang nag-stop siya. That it hit a snag or a difficulty or a complication or maybe a pitfall. Maybe you are at a point when you don't know how to start all over again. You stop, you stop, you stuck, and then hindi mo alam kung paano ka aandar ulit. Tama ba? Maybe you feel like all the weight that you have gained during this pandemic Uh, physically and emotionally and spiritually mentally parang biglang hirap may hirap ka ngayon alam mo to to gain to to start all over again to make that first step all over again because kapag mabigat ka mas mahirap kang itulak tama ba and if you can just get that one push that one nudge to get you going again kasi mahilig tayo sa mga one time big time we just waiting waiting for that big push And we are looking for that one big miracle 
We are waiting for that one big encounter with God that will change everything in our lives. That if I can just attend church, you know, today and I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait for this big message that will jumpstart me, that will push me. Na magsisimula huli ako, brand new. And maybe you've been waiting for that for weeks and somehow parang walang nangyayari. Right? That's why a lot of people, they quit church because they've been waiting for that one moment. That spur of the moment thing that will push them over the top. Amen? Maybe you're saying, Pastor, waiting lang ako for this one thing. If I can just experience this, if I can just feel this, and then, you know, I, I would hit my stride and I would have this momentum once again. But you know, before we look forward, before we look for one, this one big push, we need to understand how we get to where we are right now. How do we get stuck? How do we stop? And I believe it's not just this pandemic, you know? It wasn't a wall that stopped you. Because you know, I, I, I've, said, I've said this, yung parang analogy of a train hitting a wall and then it stops abruptly. Nagbiglang tumigil. You know, train can stop quickly. Hindi po siya biglang titigil. Any train. You know, if, you would, if you would read and study physics, ang train or anything that has force, especially kapag meron siyang bigat, hindi siya biglang bilang hihinto na lang. Are you getting what I'm saying? It takes more, sabi nila, it takes more than 2 kilometers for a train to stop or even to slow down. First, kailangan niyang bumagal muna. Hindi siya bilang hihinto. It would take, sabi nila, 2 kilometers or more pa bago siya huminto. So if, if they would slam on the brakes, it will not stop quickly. Babagal lang siya. But hindi po siya biglang hihinto. So what does that mean? In reality, COVID-19 did not stop your momentum. Or whatever situation that you are blaming right now, thinking right now, that stopped you from following Jesus Christ. It wasn't that just one thing. Are you getting this? You were already slowing down with one bad decision after another and then here comes COVID-19 and then you totally stopped. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your situation is a product of your choice. Remember we said that, right? Uh, your situation is a product of your bad decisions or maybe good decisions. If you are experiencing good things, if you're experiencing bad things, it's a product of bad decisions after another. Not just one bad decision, but a series of bad decisions. But you also need to understand that every bad decision, it creates a momentum that will eventually lead you to a negative situation. So if you're experiencing right now a negative situation, it wasn't just this one bad decision. It was a series of bad decisions. And itong disciples of Jesus then, it was probably Peter, Andrew, John, and James. They were stuck in that same situation according to the verses that they were catching nothing. They were fishers. They, they were fishermen. They tried to fish, but I, I'm not sure if that moment lang or maybe um, uh, for a certain time, they were experiencing a, a negative situation na wala sila nakukuwang catch. Right? Then here comes Jesus Christ. Sabi sa Luke chapter 5, verse 5. When Jesus got in their boat, and then sabi ni Jesus doon na, let down your nets. Ano sabi ni Peter? Peter answered, sabi niya sa verse 5, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Nothing. They're stuck. They had no momentum. Not even one fish. Sabi doon, they, had, they haven't caught anything. Kahit man lang sirang plaka o ano man na mag, mag-snag doon sa may, sa may nets nila, wala. And it, nothing. They're stuck. They're stuck. Could you please type it in the comment section? Sabihin mo, they're stuck. Now, maybe you say, if you are stuck, sabihin mo, I'm stuck. And in that moment, Jesus wanted to give their momentum back. Here comes Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus brought these disciples, especially Peter, from being useless and a failure to being successful and more. According to one of verse and though um, they were catching nothing they haven't catched anything and here comes Jesus Christ I've been Jesus Christ let down your nets and they started to ha- to catch this miracle catch there's so many catch that their boats um, started to break Masisi- nasisira na yung kanilang boat and not only that 
after they caught that miracle catch sabi ni Jesus Christ come follow me and I will make you fishers of men from catching nothing to catching a miracle to catching men and turning the world upside down that was the journey of these disciples that was the journey of Peter maybe you were stuck right now um, let me tell you this may pagasa pa let me tell you this you know if God if Jesus enters your life he can turn your world upside down and he will not just give you a miracle catch but he will make you into something that he created you to be amen maybe you're stuck right now do you want to get your momentum back it starts with one decision then followed by another decision and receiving God's love let me tell you this let receiving God's love and forgiveness and deciding to follow Jesus Christ are two different things you didn't need to be that you receive forgiveness that you receive him as your Lord and Savior that that's the start of you following Jesus Christ no that's one decision you have to make the another's decision to follow Jesus Christ when when Jesus says that can I use your boat and then sabi ni, sabi ni Pedro sure you know that's just the first time or that's the time that they received God's grace when they received the miracle catch but then after that ano sanabi ni Jesus come follow me receiving God's grace and God's love is one thing and following Jesus Christ and making that decision is another thing amen in receiving God's love and forgiveness is something that you do one time but the decision to follow Jesus Christ is something that you do each and every day that you wake up and not just every day every moment and what the disciples did sometimes pagbabasahin natin yung story na yon we would we would think na parang wow that's that's something big that's something uh, dramatic at once they left their boats they left their nets sometimes we are looking for that dramatic moment napaka dramatic kasi natin eh may likas tayo sa mga maalala mo kaya wish ko lang I don't know. You know, sometimes when we look at that, we, we look, it looks so dramatic. But in reality, it was a chain of little decisions that eventually built up to a life-changing event. Let's, let's look at that verse in Luke chapter 5. Let's read from verse 1 to verse 11. Let me just read it to you and I hope that it will come up here. Sabaron, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret or the lake of Galilee, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. And he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. He was called Simon first. Now he's called Peter. Okay. He asked him to put out a little from shore. Sabi mo, put out a little. Could you please type it in the comment section? Sabi mo, put out a little. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard and all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled them filled boats fo filled both boats so full that they began to sink when simon peter saw this he fell at jesus knees and said go away from me lord i am sinful man for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had all taken and so were james and john the sons of Zebedee, simon's partners and then jesus said to simon don't be afraid from now on you will fish for people so they pulled their boats up on shore left everything and followed him amen i want you to take note of those words na binasa din kanina you know from from one verse i'm on that um he got into the, one of the boats the one belonging to simon and asked him to put out a letter from shore before that may nasabi ron, he saw at the water's edge yung sabihin dun sa may dalang pasigan okay and Another uh, phrase, I mean, put out a little. Sometimes I say we want to jump in 
we want to jump in into the deep. We, we want yung gusto natin magpakalalim agad. But he believes that before ka magpakalalim, kailangan mo mulang magpakababaw. This is what Jesus is telling us. This is what Jesus is showing us from this from this story. Na hindi, he did not start doon sa malalim agad eh. Saan mo nagsimula? Sa water's edge. When, when Peter and Jesus was at the water's edge, and then sabi ni Jesus, could you put out a little? Just a little. Amen. Hindi agad din nila ni Jesus si Pedro doon sa malalim. He started doon sa may water's edge. When, and when Peter was ready, anong sabi ni Jesus? Let's go into the deep? No, he said, sabi niya, let's put out a little. Konti lang muna. Mababaw lang muna. Jesus didn't ask them to leave their boats immediately. Hindi agad yan. Hindi sabi agad, when he got into the boat, sabi niya, come and follow me. No. They started doing something mababaw. And then he says, go out a little bit more. Konting babaw pa. Konti pa. Konting lalim pa. Hindi niya sinabing, go into the deep and then go and follow me. It was just a little decision. Sabi ko kanina that sometimes we over-dramatize following Jesus Christ. Nakakala natin it's just one big decision that we need to make na nakakatakot. Sometimes it's so scary, right? No, 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 no. Huwag muna po ngayon because there's a lot of things happening in my life and I can't handle this big decision of following Jesus Christ. Sometimes we are so afraid to follow Jesus Christ. But this story is, telling, is letting us know that it, did, oh, it doesn't start with a big decision. It's big in the heavens, but in our reality, in our eyes, it's just a little decision. It start with a little decision. It started small, amen. And a lot of times, because of our problems, that that you know, y- yung problema natin it was so deep that we are looking for some deep solution. And sometimes we're not really, we, we really, really what? We are not really ready for this big decisions. The, these this deep decision. This deep solution to our deep problems. Tama ba? Again, ulitin ko. A lot of times, because of our deep problems, we are looking for our deep solutions. Na hindi natin alam na it will just take this little decision to conquer this big problem. Na all it takes is just a little solution to solve this big problem. Nagigit siya ibig sabihin. We know right now, this is, God, this is what God is showing us. We are in this big pandemic, this big problem, COVID-19. Right? Little do we know na itong, itong virus ito that is killing hundreds of people, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people all across the globe, ang lang problema na ito, right? A lot of us, we are so scared of this pandemic, we are so scared of this virus, na hindi tayong alam, ang katapat lang pala nito is a bar of soap. I don't have a soap right here. But, ano may yung sabihin? Ang katapat lang pila ng COVID-19, sabon. Ang katapat lang pala ng COVID-19, alcohol. Tama ba? It's a shallow solution to a deep problem. But sometimes we over-escalate things, we over-dramatize things. Na kapag, kapag narinig mo na, oh maybe... Your, 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 your throat is itching na parang feeling mo mamamatay ka na. Pag lumabas ka na, parang feeling mo, right? Bada po ang ka na. <laughs> now, all it takes pala is just alcohol and soap to wash your hands and don't touch your eyes. Kaya meron tayong face shield. Don't touch your mouth. That's why meron tayong face mask. Ano yung pilang simpleng solution na lang pala yun? Yung yung solusyon doon sa malaking problema natin. Maybe right now you're going through a problem and you're looking for that deep solution na hindi mo alam ang kailangan mo lang pila. It's just a small decision, this shallow solution to your problem. You don't have to do something big to change your situation right now. So stop waiting and stop looking for that big, big event, that big decision that you need to make. All you need to do is just put out a letter. Amen? Hindi mo naalahan pa ng grand makeover. Just decide maybe to eat a little. Hindi mo na kailangan ng grand makeover to change your appearance. You just need to wake up a little bit earlier. 
Amen. <laughs> so take those those um, eye bugs away. Take a little walks. Walk outside. Maybe read a little. Say a little prayer, sabi nga sa kanta. It will change your life. Amen? Sabi nga nila, may kasabihan, di ba? Maliit man sa inyong paningin, nakakapuwing din. Sometimes, ang gusto natin yung malalaking bagay. But we believe that little by little, day by day, a little decision, maybe to go to church, you know? Just, kind of decision lang, just go to church. Turn on yung live streaming mo. Listen. Right? How big of a decision is that? Or maybe decide to attend a squad meeting this week. Attend the life class. Read your Bible. Do a devotion. That, just a little decision. Hindi mo alam that it will make a big impact in your life. Sometimes you're just waiting for mga big decision, yung mga small decisions nga, hindi natin make. And we're looking for a big turnaround a big change in our lives. Kapag hindi nakita, gagata sa Panginoon, magagata kay Lord, na, oh, Lord, what's happening in my life? I've been doing everything that you want. But yung mga small decisions that He wants you to make, hindi mo magawa-gawa. You know, that little decisions, to put out a little, to do little, will lead to something that makes a big change in your life. That's what happened kay Peter. Just a small decision. Sabi ni Jesus, let me get in your boat. Sabi ni Jesus, fine. It's a small decision. Right? And it's happening Jesus, could you put a little out into the deep or put a little out more? Sabi ni Pedro, sure. It wasn't a big decision. Tama ba? Hindi mo na kailangan palang kalbo. Hindi mo na kailangan pag-aralan pa yun. Hindi mo na kailangan pang gumawa ng chart decision for you to make that. Sure. It's just a small decision. But it changed Peter's life. It was a series of events that changed Peter's life. A series of decisions. Amen? Now, can you imagine, can you imagine what little decision you can do in your life right now? That it will change you? That it will make a big change? How many small decisions that you've neglected to make? Amen? And now, you're finding yourself stuck because you did not make that decision. Because you did not follow through that decision. What is that decision that you've been putting out, underestimating, because you thought na it won't not amount to anything? You know, malit na bagi lang naman yun. Di mo na ako attend ng church. Di mo na ako magbabasa ng Bible. Di mo na ako magde-devotion. Let me just sleep for a few more minutes. Di mo na ako uh, attend sa life class. Di mo na ako attend sa, sa life group o sa squad meetings namin. Di mo na ako mag-follow kay Jesus just for this one time. Amen. You know, a little decision builds up momentum. <laughs> That's what's happening doon sa life or doon sa story ni Pedro here. Little decisions. After little decisions, and it's building up. In every little decision, it builds up momentum. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Same can be said about little bad decisions. Little good decisions will eventually build momentum that will bring you to good situations. And little bad decisions will make, will, will build up momentum that will lead you to bad situations. Yung akala mong walang bearing, na hindi ka naman maapektuhan eh. And you keep that, you, you keep on making that little small decisions. And hindi okay lang, sasama ako sa barkada ako, mag-iinom mo sila, pero hindi ako iinom. Small decisions na hindi mo alam, it's building up momentum. Sama ka lang sama, eventually, mapapasip ka. Eventually, makakaisang bote ka. Eventually, uuwi kang gumagapang, lasing. Why? Because you made that bad decision before. That little decision, akala mo wala namang mangyari. May, may message ko lang naman siya, wala namang mangyari. Mag-uusap lang naman kami. About life group about the vision. Na hindi mo alam that decision for you to say hi to that person. Na even if you know, alam mo magpo-fall ka, but you're thinking, a simple decision lang naman, malit na bagay lang naman yan. But it was building up momentum in you. Amen? Yung akala mong walang bearing, 
hindi ka maapektuhan, eventually, it created a momentum. You know, if you start making those little bad decisions after another, it will start to build a momentum and you will soon find yourself in a situation you don't want to be in. Amen? It didn't happen overnight. What happened? There was a build-up. A kind of build-up. Right? Yung small drip. One, one, one. Drip, drip, drip. That eventually, naka isang tabo ka na lang tubig. Now for the whole month, tumakas bigla yung water bill niyo. Why? Because of that, those one drip. Pakunti, konti. But because it was building up, naka, naka, nakapag puno ka na ng sana ng isang balde o maybe isang gram ng tubig and that's what you've wasted. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? It didn't happen overnight. There was a build-up. You just didn't or you didn't just wake up one day decided, I will not follow Jesus Christ. Ayoko na. I'm stopping. I'm quitting. Ayoko na mag-devotion. Ayoko na mag-squad. Ayoko na mag-church. I don't want to follow Jesus Christ anymore. No, hindi ka nagising one day thinking that way. It was a series of event that was built up because of your bad little decisions. It started, it started with one day you decided not to do your devotion. You started one day not to attend your, um, your squad meetings, to attend church, to open up your live streaming. Sabi mo, replay na lang, replay na lang. Saan ako mananood, mamaya na lang. Tama ba? Doon nagsimula eh. Amen? It's when you stop deciding to, to, to listen to your pastor or to your leader. Tama ba? Hindi ka naman bigla naging drug addict eh. Wala naman bigla naging drug addict overnight. Wala naman naging, naging manginginom overnight. It started with what? Sabi nga ng lola nyo, patikim tikim, pakunti konti, little by little, day by day, moment by moment. What are the decisions that you are making in your life? Small decisions that is leading you to a situation where you don't want to be in. Amen. And following Jesus Christ, becoming Christ-like, it's not, sabi ko kanina, it's not just a one-time decision. Following Jesus is a daily decision, moment by moment. Amen. You know, that's where... Um, a believer in a disciple has its difference. Thank you, James You know, Jesus is not just calling us to believe in Him, but Jesus is calling us to trust in Him and to follow Him. Amen? Not just a believer, but to become a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, it's not enough na hindi naman ang nakakalimot eh. Marami tayong ganun, right? Okay lang kayo doon na church basta hindi naman nakakalimot sa Panginoon eh. No, Jesus did not say, remember me. <laughs> hindi po siya si, sino ba yun ang gitara na yan? I forgot. But anyway, Jesus did not, is not calling us to remember Him. But Jesus is calling us to follow Him. Amen. It's not enough na hindi ka nakakalimot. We need to decide every moment, every day of our lives to follow Jesus Christ. Amen? And maybe you're thinking right now, you're saying, Pastor, ang hirap naman nun. You mean every day I need to decide? Ang hirap lang mga mag-decide just once eh. Oh, just once? <laughs> then every day pa, I would make that same decision over and over and over again. Yes, I know it's hard. But you know what? Following Jesus Christ, this is good news. Following Jesus Christ, you said that following Jesus Christ is not just a one-time decision, is a good thing. Pano ko na sabi? Why is it good? Na ang hirap na nga to make that one decision, tapos every day pa, every moment pa, I will have to decide to follow Jesus Christ. You know why it's a good thing? Because God knows that we will eventually make bad decisions. Not just once. Not just twice. We will keep on making bad decisions. And that one bad decision, this is good news, this one bad decision, because, because we need to make that everyday decision, and that one bad decision, it will not define who we are. Nagets yung ibig ko sabihin. 
ito ang pinakamahirap eh. Thinking na meron ka lang isang decision to make. Tama ba? But if you have this decision every day to make, ang ibig sabihin that, uh, um, kasi minsan ang hirap gawin yung isang decision na yun, parang mamimili ka isa lang. You know, parang doon sa, ano ba yun, who wants to be a millionaire? Is it? Who wants to be a millionaire? No, no. Deal or no deal. Diba? Ang daming decision to make. But can you imagine if you just want have this, just this one decision to make? Ang hirap siguro ng gawin yun. Which one will you pick? Deal or no deal. Ang hirap siguro nun. But because you have so many chances to make decisions that even if you make this bad decision, you will always have another day, another moment para bumawi and to make a good decision. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? Now, it's a good thing that we have this decision that we can make over and over again. It's because even if we make mistake, pwede tayong bumawi on the next decision. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying right now. You can always make one good decision after a bad decision. And it will change the course of your life. Maybe this bad decision leads you this way. But because you have another decision to make moments after. And maybe you made this bad decision and you're saying, oh, wait, I made the bad decision. There's no turning back, right? But you can make another decision that will alter your direction, going into the right direction. Amen? What does that mean? That you don't have to dwell in yesterday's bad decisions because a lot of people they are beating themselves up for making this bad decision in their life 10 years ago 20 years ago you know what i made so many bad decisions in my life but i i, I can't dwell in it i can't stop and just say all right because i made a bad decision wala namang yari sa buhay ko i made this bad decision after another decision that was bad over and over again, it, that led me into a dark 10 years of my life. And then finally, I made another, uh, this one good decision to, to follow Jesus Christ, to do the right thing. And it altered my direction. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, that I'm making all the good decisions. So many decisions of why not in every day. Sabi ko, we have like more than 5,000 decisions that we make every day. And not all 5,000 of it, I, I, I decided right. Maybe half of it or more pa nga siguro mali pa yung decision ko. But thank God, there's another decision enough after another that can change your direction ko. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why. I'm saying you don't have to dwell on yesterday's bad decisions. You know, it's time to move on and start building up momentum again. Maybe you've made that decision. Don't beat yourself up. The next decision, make it good. Amen. <laughs> and start building up momentum again. That's how we get our momentum back. Pero pang type mo again in the comment section, sabi mo, I'm getting my momentum back. And the good news is this. Here's the good news. God's plans for you did not start with your decision. I know our decisions start some momentum, right? Here's what happened in the story that we were talking about Peter's destiny, God's plans for his life, did not start when they decided or when he decided to drop everything. That dramatic moment. To drop everything and follow Jesus Christ. It did not start there. Not even when they, sat, they decided to put out a little. Or when they decided to let Jesus into their boats. It did not start there. It actually, it did not start to some verse 11. It did not start to some verse 4. But God's plans for Peter started in verse 2 and 3. And what is that? Let's, let's look at that. Sabi sa may Luke chapter 5, verse 2 and 3, He saw at the water's edge two boats left, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. God's plans for Peter's life started when Jesus chose his boat. And 
hindi po dahil sa perfect si Peter. That's why he chose Peter's boat. Sabi nga, there, there are two boats. Hindi, hindi nag-ini-mini-mini-mini mo si, si Jesus. Oh, hindi niya chinus yung pinakamagandang boat, yung pinakamaayos na boat, yung pinakamagaling na fisherman. But he just chose Peter. Peter knew, or Jesus knew that Peter was capable, but he also knew that he has so many weaknesses, but still, he chose Peter. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? That Jesus knows your strength. That's why he chose you. <laughs> and not just your strength. Jesus knows your weaknesses and still, he chose you. He chose to get in your boat, into your life. Kahit na alam niyang papalpak ka, kahit na alam niyang marami kang kahinaan, kahit na alam niyang marami kang nagawang mali. Jesus knows your struggles and He knows what you will be struggling with. And He, stood, and he still chose you. Jesus knows your failure and you will fail eventually, but He still chose you. Sabi nga sa Bible that before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. What does that mean? Hindi ibig sabihin na not just because hindi lang po dahil sa He knows His plan for your life. But He knows <laughs> what, 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 what you will be struggling with. He knows that you will be uh, failing. He knows that magkakasala ka. He knows na madadapa ka. But still, He chose you. You know, that, that is the meaning of that verse. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Jesus is saying, before my father formed you in your mother's womb, I know you. I know your fears. I know your struggles. I know your sin. I know your addictions. I know what you're hiding. But I still chose to die for you. I still chose to love you. I still chose to be in your boat. Sabi sa John 15, 16, You did not choose Him, but He chose you. Yeah, I know, every decision that we make, that every decision builds up a momentum. And in this momentum of following Jesus Christ, this momentum of changing your life did not start when you decided to let Jesus in your life. It decided when Jesus chose you, when Jesus died for you. It wasn't your decision that is moving you forward. It's His decision to get in your boat, to get in your life that started this whole momentum, this whole movement in your life. And even if Jesus knew that you would fail, even if Jesus knew that you would struggle, He still chose you. So what does that mean for all of us? It means that you don't have to build up on your momentum. Because sometimes we are so afraid to follow Jesus Christ because we thought that we, we think that we will fail. We think that we will disappoint Him. We think that eventually He will stop, that we will not reach your expectations sa atin. And we're so afraid. Why? To build up that momentum. You don't have to build up on your momentum. You just have to ride on Jesus' momentum, on His decision to die for you. To choose you. And making that daily decision to follow Jesus Christ might seem hard. Parang ang hirap follow through. Tama ba? I don't know if you're experiencing this or if you're feeling this. The feeling mo you've let down Jesus Christ. That you've let down God by not following Him, by failing, by making this bad decision. Parang hirap eh. Maybe you're in that position right now. You're deciding. You're trying to decide. Well, do I need to follow? Or maybe, can I follow Jesus Christ? Can I, can I do it? Can I hold this throw? You know, I still have half my lifetime. I still have 35 years to live. What if I make a mistake? God knows that you will. But He still died for you. Pastor, what if, what, what if one day, bilang nahirapan ako, nag-struggle ako to follow Jesus Christ? 
it's okay. He knows that you will. But he still chose you. Maybe that's why some of us are still having the second thoughts of being baptized. Maybe you're in that situation right now. Hindi ko mapandigan eh. Bakit ako makapag-commit? Maybe you are afraid that you might be able to sustain, that you might not be able to sustain that momentum. That maybe along the way, you will make a bad decision. You know what? Jesus knows. <laughs> Jesus knows that you will. Just as Jesus knows that Peter will deny him three times. Just as Jesus knows that when he dies, Peter will go back, slide back to his old life. And that's why he showed up again. To follow up on that momentum that he started by choosing Peter. Now maybe that is you right now. You're struggling in following Jesus Christ. Let Jesus show up in your life right now. And build up on that momentum that he started in your life. You know, that is our declaration for this year as a church. That God will finish what he started in you. That momentum that he started. It's not for you to build up on it. It was Jesus who started. It is Jesus who will keep on adding into it. Amen. And even if you're thinking that maybe, maybe I will not be able to follow through. Jesus knows that you will, but He still is choosing you. Come and follow me, and I will make you who God created you to be. Amen. So right now, I want you to decide once again to follow Jesus Christ, no matter how hard it is. I need you to decide right now to follow Jesus Christ, even if it seems na parang hindi mo magagawa yun. Just one decision right now. Build up on what Jesus started in your life, following you, in, in choosing you, in dying for you. Amen. Maybe right now, there's some people who are struggling to be baptized. I want to speak to you right now. I know it seems like a big decision to make. But in reality, in the eyes of God, it's not. Amen. And don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what if you fail. Don't worry about what if I don't follow through. Don't worry about paano ko manghina ako. Amen. Just trust God. If He chose you, He's seeing something different in you. If He chose you, if you're hearing this right now, that means God has a plan for your life. And it is His plan. You just have to ride the momentum. Ride the wave. Amen. Can you make that decision right now? In following Jesus Christ, no matter what? Just simple decision after simple decisions. One decision after another. Lord, I will follow you every moment of my life. Every situation. And once you build up that momentum, you know, once you speed up more and more, kahit na alam mo yung dumaan sa paligid mo, you would just run through it. You would just break through it. Hey Amen. If you're looking for breakthrough right now, it starts with one decision to build up this one momentum. Amen. And believe me, once you get that momentum going, like a freight train, like a train, not even a wall can stop you. You would just go through it in all. It started with one decision to follow Jesus Christ. And what happened to Peter? He let Jesus in his boat. When Jesus asked him, put out a little further, he did. And then sabi niya, Jesus, let's go into the deep. And he did. And then sabi niya, put down your nets. Kahit na merong konting, konting uh, uh, doubts in him. But siya, sabi niya, if you say so. And then finally, when Jesus asked Peter, come and follow me. Because of those small decisions that he made. Those small events. And led up to that big moment. Come and follow me. Leave everything behind. It was so easy for him. Why? 
because of the momentum that was built up. Maybe right now you don't have that. That I can say guts, but you can't decide yet. You know to 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 fully surrender to God. Maybe all you need to do right now is just say, "All right, I'll follow you, Lord. Whatever you tell me, whatever He says in Your Word." I will obey it one by one until I build up this momentum until that time that big shift in my life happens to finally surrender everything to you and to receive and to believe what you have promised for me what you have planned for my life and it will not be a big decision to make amen bakit? kasi meron ng momentum when you will break through Maybe right now you're looking for a breakthrough. It starts with one decision. Maybe right now you're looking for that one moment, you know, that you can say, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to leave everything behind. But Lord, it's so hard. Just start with one decision. I will do my devotion. I would, I would go to church. I would sign up next Sunday. <laughs> I would watch grow. I will attend... Um, squad meetings, I will attend life class, I will be baptized. That's a start. That's a start. And believe me, breakthrough is on its way. Your breakthrough, your miracle is on its way. Amen. Come on, let's, let's pray. If you are deciding right now to follow Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Lord, malamit pun salamat for this afternoon. Thank you, God, for this time that you have given us, Lord. And I pray, God, that as we make these small decisions, Lord, I pray that we will start to build up momentum that will lead to a life-changing event, Lord. I pray, God, that you give us strength that even in these small decisions that we will make, Lord, Lord, we will continue to follow you. Even if you make decisions that we don't think that it will make a difference in our lives, Lord, I pray that we will make the right decisions, Lord. That when the hard decision comes, Lord, that we will have this momentum of following you, that it will not be so hard to make that right decision to follow you in that moment because of the momentum that was built up. And thank you, Lord, that it wasn't us who really pushed ourselves, but it was you who started the momentum. And we believe, Lord, that you are faithful to finish what you started in our lives. And I pray, God, that as a church, we will start to build up momentum. That we will keep on following you no matter what. That we will start to drop everything that we have. <laughs> everything that we are going through right now. And follow you. Lord, we are praying for those people who have decided to, to be baptized this week, last week, next week. Lord, I pray that you will make a big impact in their lives. That this decision is not just for them, but this decision is a decision for generations. A decision for their families, Lord. And Lord, we are declaring that as, as they surrender their lives to you, Lord, that eventually the ball will start rolling. It will gain momentum. It will change not their lives, not just their lives, but their families' lives. And their future families' lives. For generation and generations, Lord. Lord, marami po salamat, God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. So again, thank you for sticking with us, and I hope that this message will change your life forever. Amen. Let's keep on worshiping. God bless.